Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Jason Roberts Foundation Careers Fair. I'm Joe Tung, a trustee of the foundation, and I've worked with the JRF for nearly 10 years now. In my other life, I run a sports agency and production company, but it's not what I ever thought I'd be doing, nor actually what I wanted to do when I had my heart set on being a football referee aged 16, or even a lorry driver when I was about six. I generally thought it would let me see the world, and that was my way to travel the world. I don't know about you, but this year has definitely offered me a lot of time to think, reflect and focus on what's really important to me. For lots of us, that's meant taking a look at our jobs and our career, where we are, where we want to be, where we thought we might be. And so here at the Jason Roberts Foundation, we wanted to offer you the chance to hear from some stellar companies to inform you, stimulate your thought process around your, your current career and hopefully inspire you a bit. Our first speaker is Sergeant Siobhan Bramley. Siobhan is a specialist recruiter and engager and has worked for the RAF for over 10 years. Okay, so we're going to run through some roles, qualifications, the training, pay, some benefits and where you can find out more. A lot of people are quite surprised to know there's over 60 different types of roles in the Air Force. Whether you're interested in helping people, fixing things, transport, travel, computing, to be honest, the list is fairly endless and it's definitely worth having a look at. We're not all just pilots. A lot of people are quite surprised to know that six of our roles actually require no quali formal qualifications whatsoever. We will, however, put you through your foundation skills in English and maths free of charge. Qualifications for the different roles go all the way to degree and beyond. It really just depends on what you'd like to do. So everybody gets trained in the military and in the REF. If you're going for a non-commissioned branch, then that's 10 weeks training at a place called Halton. If you're doing a commission branch, then that's 24 weeks and that's at a place called REF Cranwell. Your specialist training really will depend on the type of role that you take. That can last anything from six weeks to over a year and that's why they average out at about eight months but at the end of that training if you pass you've got a guaranteed job at the end of it and not a lot of jobs offer that especially as over 22 of our roles are apprenticeships all that come with a job at the end pay something that everybody's interested in if you go for one of the non-commissioned ranks during training so from day one of training your wages will start on £15,670 a year plus your benefits. And then after training, that will rise to 20000 plus. If you come in at one of our officer roles for which you need two A-levels as well as GCSEs and above, depending on what you do, during training, £27,000 plus, And after training, 31800 which is pretty competitive. The benefits that we, I mentioned briefly there, subsidised accommodation, you, accommodation costs for a single room can be as little as £170 a month, which certainly compares with Sibby Street. Um, food is subsidised, opportunity to do sports for free, there's discounts, bonuses, the list goes on. And I can answer some questions about that if you have any. This is some examples of some of the sports types of things that people have got involved with or while being in the REF, not using any of their leave. So what do we want from people? Some flexibility, some enthusiasm, an appetite to learn. It's not about what you already know, but what we can teach you. We're not expecting you to already know how to fix an aircraft or service and electrical piece of equipment, we will teach you all about it, providing you have the ambition and you're a team player. You can find out more on our website and I'll post that information up later for you. Thanks Siobhan, I thought that was so fascinating and who told, who, why didn't you tell me that I could be in the RAF? I didn't have to be the lorry driver to travel. I didn't, you know, I just, I don't like planes. So I was like, oh but no, you still I can't can. the RAF. We actually take people all the way up to age 49. And for some roles that even changes to go even further. So it's never too late for anybody.
Um, so our next guest is um, Buklaka Barret Sukmari from Network Rao. And Buklaka looks after university engagement for our graduate team. I am from Network Rao. Uh, I work as a talent acquisition specialist. I usually work on the graduate side of things, but from time to time, such as these presentations, I get involved with apprentice uh, opportunities as well. I'm promoting it. Um, and then uh, hopefully you find it helpful and we'll clarify a couple of questions for you. So um, who is Network Rail? A little, bit of a, a little bit of introduction about Network Rail because there sometimes there are a little bit of misconception. There is a little bit of misconception of, of who we are and what we do. So we don't look after the trains. We don't run the trains. We look after and operate the infrastructure when it comes to the railway, such as uh, 20,000 miles of tracks, 30,000 bridges, tunnels and viaducts, stations, uh, different lands that belongs to Network Rail, and they they are all around the, the tracks, so we need to look after those as well. So we, ho we have over 3,050 types of roles across maintenance, options and operations, engineering and professional services. So a lot of different engineering projects that you can get involved with, and it's never the same. Uh, so you won't have a one day that it's, it's it would be the same or or doing the same thing all over again. So a lot of diversity around the jobs that you can get involved with. Uh, we help hundreds of apprentices start their careers every year. Um, just as an interesting fact, for example, our CEO Andrew Haynes. He started as an as an, an apprentice, and now he's the CEO of the company. So obviously, it's, it, it didn't happen overnight. So a lot of hard work went into that, and the decades of hard work, and then uh, here he is uh, working working as a, for Network Rail as a CEO. So the, what I'm saying here is that really is that opportunities are endless so it's all up to you as long as you're willing to learn as long as you're willing to put yourself forward to different projects um, and want to progress you can progress and the uh, sky is the limit really so we got locations all over the uk we give you the support and training to learn and grow in your career um, there is always a line manager who looks after you. There is a, a nice body system uh, where you can ask your peers uh, for help or reflection or mentoring, uh, someone mentoring you, so your line manager, and you will set up a personal development plan uh, with regards to your career, and then uh, they will be able to help you to get onto different projects. So where career career in rail can take you? As we said earlier, we have over 3,500 types of roles across maintenance, operations, engineering, and professional services. Whichever area you choose, you'll pay for all, will pay for all your training and you'll earn as you learn, as you develop in your career. Operations and maintenance roles have a very clear career path. You'll move up through the levels and become an invaluable expert. If you want to become an engineer, you choose a discipline that will support you and train you on your way to becoming chartered. Working in professional services can give you the chance to try out different areas of the business until you find your niche. Joining an organization with the size, scale and ambition of Network Rail means there is no limit to, to how far you can go. So I gave you that example previously. So how Rail is growing every year? Since the 1990s, passengers' numbers have doubled and this is still growing. So as I mentioned, 4.5 million passengers a day on a, on a regular day, on a, on a normal day where, where trains are running up to, up to full service. The rail industry is responsible for putting billions of pounds into the economy. Our role is to supply chain support um, over 2,000, 216,000 jobs. So new technologies create opportunities for us to serve more passengers. Businesses rely on both our passengers and freight services to operate. We are creating a greener economy. Each freight train takes 76 HGVs off the road. Um, how nice is that? If you're looking for a long-term career with an org organization that will be with you for decades to come, Network Rail is a great choice. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much for the
Um, I've got a couple of questions for you. Uh, I was really interested to hear about your chief exec who was an apprentice. That's amazing. And actually, it shows what a good employer you, you must be if you're retaining staff like that. But um, Jack's asked, if you're an apprentice, if you're on the apprentice scheme, are you then guaranteed a yes. job? Yes. So what happens that once the apprentices finish the scheme, then they will need to apply for a job. Uh, however, I haven't heard of one apprentice who applied and didn't get a job. So, so it's not like here is your degree, you finished your scheme and this is your job sort of thing. Mm -hmm. You have to go through the application process. My biggest advice, um, when you're on the scheme, just make sure that you're networking with people from the company, managers, uh, colleagues, so they know you, they know your skills, they know what you stand for, they know who you are. And when it comes to applying for jobs, it will be that much easier to land the job because you're not starting from scratch or this is my name, this is what I have done, da da da. They will be familiar with you and uh, as, a, as a colleague, as, as a person, and it will make it that much easier to apply for a job and land the job. Uh, Jason Thomas joins us. Jason is the regional recruitment manager for the South and he's a key member of the future students team. Over to you, Jason. Thank you very much, Joanna. And hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Um, pleasure to be here and talk about careers and sport. And that's what we do. We provide degrees basically in football, studying in football stadiums. Um, how unique is it to go into class every day and go into Wembley Stadium, walking up Wembley Way? You know, how many people were killed to go into Wembley just to visit or to go to a game, but you could be there for three years full time, access to like literally 40% of the stadium, uh, work alongside the FA and Premier League clubs during your three years. So, a bit of a taste. And it's not just football, like football's a pinnacle sport, it's the most popular sport in the world. Like 50 million, 15 million people play football in this country um, every week from pros to amateurs. So, um, you know, if you're good at football in terms of what you do in terms of work, then you could probably transfer that to other, other sports. Um, so, do bear that in mind. Moving forward, so why why UCFB? Why would you consider going to UCFB? So why would you consider going to university to study? Well, first of all, to earn money. You know, we all study to grow, to get a, a better job, to become employable. Um, but why not become employable in a sector that's worth a lot of money? So you can see here our, our slide is, is showing that six hundred to seven hundred billion dollars is the worth of the sports industry. So if, if we equivalent that to pounds, we're looking at 450 billion pounds. That's probably that the UK spending budget, um, not currently because of COVID, but from previous years. That's a lot of money. And that grows every single year. There's always a growth spike within sport. You look at female sport recently, getting new investment, more televised events, more major sponsorships. You look at technology, you look at like, the globalization, look at social media. There's so many jobs that get created in sport. And sport lead the way in other sectors to show these new jobs and a new way of doing it um and it creates money so you can see here you're you, you know if you want a, a job you really have to think what sector is actually growing and can i be part of that growth can i get a slice of that cake um why you cfb so what i put here is a stat i quite like this stat um so 26 percent of all people employed in europe are from the uk you have to understand there's a lot of people in europe over 300 million people in europe but you know, over a quarter of those employed in sport are from the UK. And what that shows us is the heritage. You know, we're coming from an environment, a country, a city that's rich in sport. You know, we founded a lot of the world's kind of like favourite and most popular sports, including football, um, cricket, rugby. You know, we have a heavy rip hand into, into the, the rules of, all, um, excuse me, tennis, Formula One as well um snooker and also looking at um darts so you look at the top 10 sports i mentioned about six of them and um a lot of the heritage comes from here so i have friends in china i have friends in in um in america and they say to me when i coach and when i do my job when they hear my accent they, they hear i'm from from the uk i'm from england straight away they, they look at me like they, they want to respect me or listen to me and that's just because of where you come from and you know people need to carry that with them and see that as respect so you still have to earn respect but understand that if you've got you're coming from a rich heritage of a sport you know carry that with you and carry that with a sense of pride and and understand that you can you can walk into places where it may command a little bit more respect where you come from but again you may need to carry yourself the right way and you know you may be able to apply this to many jobs that you see here on the board but over four hundred and fifty thousand different jobs in sport different types of job roles that's huge okay 
why go to UCF because you want a job in, in a career in sport and to become employable. Um, how are you going to do that? Well, yeah, you need to put a bit of the work in. So, you know, what you see on the board is the kind of subject areas that we cover at UCFB. Um, marketing as one sector, PE coaching, business and law, and also, excuse me, event management. So what we've done, we put the kind of possible jobs and the outcomes from the sector. And you can also see the degree that's affiliated to. So we do all of the degrees at Wembley. Um, we do most of the degrees at the Etihad. Um, so obviously Wembley being the closest to, to London to what we do, um, but we also have the same base and set up in the Etihad, home of Manchester City. Okay, so always about experiences. What we see here is our learning model. Um, it kind of shows a unique kind of pattern to what we do with students. It shows the kind of platform that they can grow. Um, so the three elements here, what we teach, where we teach and how we teach is what we feel our students become the best they can be and become employable um, upon graduation. So um, you can see here what we teach is football. It's probably 80% of our operation. We, we've come from a football club. UCFB was founded in 2011 by Burnley Football Club. And the co-director and chairman at the time thought of a great idea to, to, to educate young people in football. It started off as a business, football business uni. And, um, you know, a lot of people work in football, but not educated about it. So maybe it creates bad ethics and maybe there's not a good system of um, inclusion. Football and sports are all about inclusion. But education and football is important. So that's where we've come from. Um, we also teach sports. So a lot of people that go to UCFB don't want to work in football. You know, I mentioned the subject groups, business, media, coaching and events. You can do sports business, not football business. You can do sports media. You can do sports coaching. So we have people that want to work in boxing, athletics. We work with Surrey County Cricket. We work with the RFL. There's, there's careers out there within those niches. So we just create different niches and different pathways that people can really be selective and say, you know, that, that is for me. You know, I was lucky in my first year, I worked with the FA. I got a job at QPR. Um, I worked at Talk Sport as well. My second year, I worked with UEFA. I worked with Sweden under 17s and Built a massive CV, but a massive network as well. And also worked with the Jason Roberts Foundation, which is really cool. Um, Jason, so I'm going to jump in there only because we are so pressed for time. I've got a couple of questions for you, but what we're going to do is I'll put them to you and we'll have to answer them in the private chat. Um, loved your passion. Loved hearing all about uh, UCFB. As you say, we do work with you do work with us, the Jason Roberts Foundation, and we've actually got a Jason Roberts scholarship, Jason Roberts Foundation scholarship, which is available um to people for the next the next school year so yeah pop your questions in the comments jason don't go anywhere i'm going to ask you to reply in the comments and we'll move on to our next guest if that's okay thank you so much no At all. So next up, we have got Deepak Chavda. Uh, Deepak is from St. George Property Developers. Now, I'm, I'm sure even if um, you don't know the name, you'll be able to picture the sign. Uh, you'll always see them around town. Um, the St. George logo, it's really clear. Um, and Deepak is the Employment Strategy Manager and has been with St. George Developers for over six years. Deepak, over to you. Party Group, as you know, we're a construction developer. Uh, we build mixed use residential commercial developments. Uh, we create parks and public spaces with great facilities um, where people love to live and, uh, you know, it benefits the communities. Um, now, Grand Union is our project which we're developing in Brent. Um, it's located just behind the Ace Caf, uh, down Beresford Avenue. Uh, just off the north circular so where you see um the large sort of yellow outline that that's the actual site that we've um, acquired and we're where grand union is based um the site previously was a the former northfields uh industrial estate there was a, a number of low quality industrial commercial and warehouse buildings which are located in in in, in that space and none of it was really accessible by the local community it was only sort of by the businesses or the people that had to be there um so you know very closed off our vision what you'll see in the two slides there is what we aim to develop uh and what grand union will potentially look like so you know it's it's, it's going to be uh you know it's going to transform the whole landscape it's going to create beautiful homes um it's going to open up the canal side it's going to create a stunning new landscape for the residents and the local community uh, we're going to be bringing in businesses uh, within the commercial floor spaces that we've got down there and basically make it a vibrant 
you know, really vibrant hub within Alberton that both benefit the, the, the new residents as well as the existing community that's there. Um, the development itself, uh, we're going to be on site there for over 20 years. Um, the development is going to be built in six phases. Uh, the, the build program is going to last around 15 years. Um, we can have 11 acres of open green space, over 3,000 new homes. We're aiming to support over 200 apprenticeships uh, on that development. Um, we're going to have, you know, the canal and riverside opened up to the public and and residents. We're going to have 5,000 square foot of community, uh, sorry, a 5,000 square foot new community centre, um, which the local community down there can access. We're going to have 40,000 square foot of commercial space where the businesses can go into, and you know, hopefully, we're going to create. Well, we are going to create uh, over 200,000 square foot of employment space, which is new employment space. Uh, for you know, which could be accessed by local businesses and local residents. So you know, a massive improvement to the wider area. Now, there's a number of routes and pathways you can take to get in, getting into construction. So I'm just going to touch on these uh, briefly. So again, you're probably familiar with apprenticeships. Uh, apprenticeships are made up of obviously working on site and then having that day release to attend college, or it could be done where you work on site for a month and then you get a, a block release, which is a week release to go to your training center to do the training. Um, apprenticeships could take anywhere between one to five years, depending on what you're doing. Um, key things with apprenticeships is, you know, they, you still need to, you know, even if you're doing a trade, um, you still need to have your maths and English. So you still need your GCSEs. If you don't have your GCSEs, I would encourage you to try and get your functional skills um, a more recent introduction is T-Levels. Now, T-Levels are, uh, it's a two-year course, it's a technical qualification. Um, once you complete your GCSEs, if you don't want to progress onto A-Levels, you know, you, you've got these T-Levels which have been introduced, which is, again, in a college setting, they will be linked up with 45 hours being spent within an industry placement. So that's another option you can look at. Um, you've got the traditional routes, which is going to university, uh, doing a degree in construction related uh, uh, course and then uh, you know Barclay Group like ourselves um, and some of the other larger developers they've all got graduate schemes so obviously when you're coming to uh, an end of your qualification or you've got about a year left it's always good to go on the website look at the various construction developers and doing an application as part of the grad scheme you know if you're successful you still have to go through interview screening process and then obviously selection process uh, the other option is, uh, you know, you're attending college at the moment or going to a training provider, you're doing construction related qualification, um, really you want to be looking to get yourself into a job uh, within the field that you're studying and, you know, getting you working towards your MBQ qualification or, uh, or you know, uh, you, colleges can normally switch that and you can do your apprenticeship side of it and that will provide you with the opportunity to get the diploma as well as the practical experience needed within uh, a specific trade or, or construction field. Um, the other two, you've got traineeships, which is a government initiative. It's a government funded scheme. So again, if you meet the criteria and you're eligible, um, some training providers deliver traineeships, which is, uh, you know, where you do a, a certain period within the classroom where they support you with the CV, employability workshops. And then uh, there's another element of it, which is to do with the work experience. So combined, that will form a part of your traineeship. Alternatively, you know, the next speaker that's going to be coming along, Brent Works, we work very closely with them. Um, so again, you know, you could speak to the advisor down there. Alternatively, you know, you could speak to someone at Jason Roberts Foundation. And obviously, if you've got any questions, I'll try and answer them now. But if you do have questions at a later date, by all means, do, uh, you know, let them know and they can contact me and, you know, we can take it from there. Oh, final guest. I know we're running over slightly, but I think you'll agree everyone's been so interesting. We didn't want to rush it through. So let me introduce D Kumar, who works for Brent Works. D, over to you. Hi, everyone. Uh, I think I'm the last one, so they've saved the best for last, hopefully, here. Um, so I'm going to crack on and talk about vacancies, live vacancies that we have with Brent Works, who we are and what we've got for you. Brent Works is an employment service and we support local people into local opportunities. 
Um, myself, I'm Dee. I look after all the construction opportunities within Brent and I do have a team. They have a range of different roles. That's admin, hospitality. We've got care. We look after um, engineering roles like things like, you know, like uh, fiber optics. Uh, we have uh, roles within Brent Council. So a host of different roles. So what we do is we are a we're like a recruitment agency, but we work with the council. So we support local. We are free of charge and we support local people into work and apprenticeship opportunities. What we do is we provide you with one to one advice and guidance towards finding work and we connect you with jobs within Brent and across London. The general process would be that you would apply for a vacancy that you see on our website. Once we've received your application, if your um, application is it meets the essential criteria of the role, we will then call you. We'll have a telephone conversation with you to ask you about why you apply for this role and why you think you're suitable for the role. If obviously with COVID right now, we can't do group assessments, but we will have the assessment with you over the telephone at the moment. And then if you're successful with us, we will then submit your CV to the employer. OK. The current opportunities that we have now, these opportunities change every week. So if you don't see something that you're interested in right now, please check back. So in regards to construction, I specifically look after all the construction opportunities within Brent. I work closely with St. George uh, and Deepak, but as, as, as well as St. George, they are, there are so many different contractors who are building in Brent right now. And a lot of these contractors have an obligation to provide a certain number of those opportunities to Brent residents. Um, there is a lot of work um, available in construction, whether that's actual work or whether that's apprenticeship opportunities. I know you were talking about women in construction. I just placed a female college leaver as a labourer onto a weights site in Wembley Park. OK, and she's a labourer. She wants to become a plumber, but sometimes you've got to start from the bottom and work your way up. So, you know, she was a female. What I do also want to say is if you want to work in construction, you're, you, you're not necessarily need to be doing the manual work if you don't want to. There are so many other things that you could do in construction. And that could be admin, that can be site management, health and safety, quality, uh, a quantity surveyor. So what I do suggest you do is you email us or you go on our website, OK, and you register with us. Once you register with us, you will get our weekly vacancy alerts in your inbox. So every week you'll get a list of all the current vacancies that we got. And you can apply for them as and when you see something relevant. Like I said, it's not just construction that we do. We do a whole host of different things and we cover a whole host of different vacancies. You know, we're currently looking at working with the NHS uh, with some of their vacancies. We work closely, you know, with, like I said, the Met Police. Um, you know, we get different things coming in all the time. So I really hope that we can help you. If you've got any questions or you prefer to call us, you can even call us directly and talk about how we can support you into work. Thank you so much. And thank you to everybody for joining us this evening. I know that time's precious, but actually so are you. And job fulfillment and career is important. So I think if you can, like I said to you, open mind, take some time to reflect on what you've heard from our amazing guests. Um, thank you, Sergeant Sivon, Buglaka, Jason, Deepak and Dee. You've all been brilliant um, giving up your time. And um, we will make sure that we share all your um all your content across our social channels um, and website for the next week. If you missed anything and would like further information, get in touch via the Jason Roberts Foundation. We're on we're on the socials, as I said. Do come and get involved in, in your community and our community activities as soon as it is safe to do so. We're running a lot of online activities at the moment. So keep in touch. Take care. Just want to say thank you to Brent Council and the Mayor of Brent for your continued support. Have a good evening, everybody, and thank you for your time.